Chira seems to always release enthusiast-focused, desirable watches, and these two are no exceptions to that. I've seen a ton of videos on the silver, I've seen a ton of videos on the bronze, but I've never seen someone compare both of them, so I thought you'd like to see that. Baby, you give me ice and fire You're giving me wind and rain You're some kind of butterfly Baby, you give me fear that A big thanks to Ken's Watches, their watch dealer in Hong Kong, for the hands-on of these two pieces. Check them out at their retail locations or online. So let's actually start with the known issues of these watches because those are the more popular videos on YouTube and of course people would like to know when something goes wrong with their watch. So with the silver, well it tarnishes, and the bronze patinas. The bronze is much more expected, the silver, no one really produced a silver cased watch that was so popular, so it was a little bit unexpected. Now pure silver itself is not supposed to tarnish, but it's too malleable, so this watch is 92.5% silver and remaining 7.5% are additions like copper. And because of that, it tends to tarnish. Now this is really annoying in both cases. You, you really like what you buy to remain the same over the course of its lifetime, but that is not the case with both of these watches. But unfortunately, I'd argue that the bronze version is worse off because it gets duller quicker than the silver. I think the silver seems to tarnish a bit and then perhaps there's a layer formed and it, it doesn't get much worse but the bronze tends to patina and look really dull I think reasonably quickly or depending on what environment the watch is in so that's important to note when comparing these two now let's get on to the fundamental differences between the two now the silver version only comes on the strap or a native strap no bracelet like the bronze the bronze only comes on the bronze bracelet but you can retrofit it with whatever strap option you like now the silver, that's really silly. I would have really liked to see a silver bracelet on this watch. If that had been the case, I would have easily ranked the silver higher than the bronze. But alas, that is not the case. The bronze version comes on a really nice bracelet. Now this has got the T-Fit clasp. It, it was the watch that introduced the T-Fit clasp. Somehow, this remains to be the only Black Bay 58 with the T-Fit clasp. Now there's a Black Bay Pro, which is the same sort of size, but that's not the Black Bay 58. Now the Black Bay 54, that has the T-Fit clasp as well, and the Black Bay 41s also do. So that's a bit weird, I don't know what Tudor is doing there, I think they're going to refresh the 58 next year perhaps, and uh, they want people to buy it then as well. Now the clasp itself, I, I think you've seen the raving reviews over it, it is quite fantastic in a watch in this price range. Now another big fundamental difference between the two is the fact that the silver version has a display case back, so you can see the movement, whereas no other Black Bay watch has that except for the black bay dark ceramic well the, the black ceramic version with the first metas movement apart from that i think there's no other black bay where you can see the the movement but the the sad thing is it's kind of dull it, there's nothing too special about the movement or its finishing or its decoration so do you really want to see it i don't know if you have another watch with a display case pack this is not that novel to you so it's not as special as it could have been, but nevertheless, it's there. And the bronze version does not have this. Now, of course, adding another crystal at the bottom increases the thickness of the watch, but this is very marginally so. It's only 0.7 of a millimeter thicker, so at 12.7 compared to 12 on the regular black base and the bronze version as well. So that's not much of a difference, and that's surprisingly good. Next up, the dial. Now, both dials are sort of muted in their own way. Well, the bronze version is not really muted, it's just brown. It's a, it's a naturally duller color, but it's a very rich version of the brown. But the gray, the top gray dial on the silver version, it's so subtle and muted. It, it may seem cool in pictures and press shots, and it may have this really minimalist aesthetic towards it that a lot of people might gravitate towards, but in person, I don't know, it, it just felt kind of flat and a little bit too bland. I'd say the regular Black Bay 58 dial, the black gilt dial, is nicer. It's nicer than this grey. I get the affinity towards the monochromaticness of this watch, but the thing is, uh, the way this watch is positioned, it's a special metal watch. It's, it's not a daily watch. It's not expected to be the only watch in someone's collection. So I think they could have given it a little bit more flair. In a special metal watch, you'd like to see something 
a little bit brighter, I guess. Now, there's a small subsection of watch enthusiasts that really like the discreetness of this, and I'm glad Tudor has appealed to them, but in terms of most people, and in terms of me, I don't get it. Maybe this grey suits some aspect of your fashion sense or minimalism. If that is the case, explain why you prefer this in the comments. One thing I really like on the silver are the hands being silver. Well, they're probably not silver, the material itself. It, it's perhaps white gold or platinum or something, I'm not, I'm not too sure. Generally Rolex and Tudor use white gold I think and rose gold on the gilt version. But I like that it's not gilt, it's not gold. I don't like to see that in watches generally. Uh, it, it has that whole patina vibe, which is again not my thing. That's why I like the blue version of the Black Bay 58 more than the, the black dialed gilt version. So that's just a preference thing. In the case of the bronze version, of course it makes more sense to have gilted hands. Silver hands on that would really stick out like a sore thumb. That makes sense. But generally speaking, I really like the silver looking hands. But the other fundamental difference between the two dials is the fact that the bronze version has got the 369, the Arabic numerals also. So it's kind of got the Explorer configuration plus the stick markers. And I think it's the only Black Bay watch that has this. So that's quite special. Now this watch in general is very special because it's a boutique only edition and it's quite hard to get. There's not that many boutiques that, that Tudor has. So it's very limited supply, but you can get it on the gray market. It's not substantially more. So it is nice that there's more to the watch than just a differently colored dial and a different material for its construction. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the clasp is another thing that makes the bronze version special. Uh, it is a boutique only watch. So, so it is cool to see that this special edition watch is a little bit better than most special edition watches in the sense that there was there are more revisions to the design and there's more thought process behind the creation of this piece. It's not just slap on a new color and call it a day and make it limited. I like this. I like the way Tudor handled this. Next up, the dimensions of the watches. There's no noticeable difference apart from the thickness because of that 0.7 millimeter display case back addition. And of course, the, you, it's comparing apples to oranges because one's on a bracelet and one's on a strap. So they wear completely differently as well. In terms of on wrist presence, it's very hard to definitively say which wears better. If you're a bracelet guy, you like the bracelet. If you're a strap guy, you're gonna like the silver version. So in terms of myself, I am a bracelet guy. I like the way the bronze wears. I like the weight of it. The clasp uh, plays a significant role in the way the watch balances and sits on the wrist. So I like all of those things, but I'm not against straps. I do like watches on straps as well. So I wouldn't say that I dislike the way the silver version wears. There really isn't too much difference from a regular Black Bay 58 on a bracelet or a strap, if you were blindfolded, that is, and you couldn't touch the clasp. So for me, I prefer the bracelet. I like the way it sits on the wrist. I like the, the heft of the bracelet. I like to know that there's something substantial on the wrist. Now let's go over versatility. Just looking by the definition of that word alone, clearly the silver wins. It kind of looks like a steel watch. It's just a little bit more lustrous. It's got that top dial. Now this is where I understand why people would gravitate towards this watch if they actually want to wear a special metal watch as their daily watch. It kind of makes a lot of sense to do that, except for the tarnishing. That ignored, you can't really wear the bronze as a daily watch. First of all, you're gonna accelerate the patina, but if you're not bothered about that, and you're just willing to polish it now and then, it's still very shiny. It looks like gold from a distance, and it's super noticeable. You would pick up comments on this watch instantly, all the time. So obviously the silver is far more discreet looking and I would say it's one of the most muted looking Tudors purely because of that top dial and no gilt. So the silver clearly wins on versatility and daily wear ability. Now if it were made out of white gold or platinum, there's this uh, cool lucrative stealth wealth um, aura around it. There is a subsection of people that gravitate towards that and find that kind of cool, if you know, you know kind of thing. There isn't that with this because it's made out of silver. Silver is not particularly valuable. Um, it's not really worth more. I'd, I'd argue that the steel counterpart is better than silver as a material choice for this watch. So the use of silver is just for the sake of novelty. And if, if you like that, then that's cool. But otherwise it doesn't make too much difference monetarily. For the novelty factor to really work on me, I would expect something more, maybe 
a new complication added to the watch or something unique about the dial. That is not the case with the silver version at least. That's kind of why I like uh, the black ceramic version. It's got the, it was the first one of the Metas movement and it's, it's a black ceramic case. So if I had to pick between the two, I'd say in terms of novelty, that would win over this. And that's the same reason why the, the bronze also wins in terms of novelty. It's far more unique. So if you're wondering which you should get, well, here's my reasoning. If you want versatility, discreetness, daily wear, the silver is there. And if you appreciate the novelty of silver to get that over the, over the steel version. Oh, you have to really like gray. Gray must be your favorite color in the world. Not mine, but if it is, then you're left without choice. You gotta pick the silver. And also if you care about minimalism, it's hard to put minimalism and watch collecting in the same bucket, but if you can, and if you do justify it, then the silver is for you. For everybody else, the bronze is the way to go. But you do have to get over the patina aspect and be ready with the polishing cloth every now and then. So I've recently launched channel memberships, see if you find some value in it. It is particularly hard to get these videos out in a timely manner. Much appreciated, see you in the next vid.